Sorry for the wait. I had a couple shipping delays that just really put me behind schedule, but I've been making progress, so let me get you caught up to speed. Let's go. As always, thanks to everybody who left uh, comments and feedback in the last video. Um, one recommendation was I'm um, doing something about my air recirculation input here. Um, I had left this cavity open, but I came up with a design for an insert to help uh, disperse the airflow uh, along the entire width of that vent. And uh, after testing it, um, it actually it helped a lot. I also got a lot of feedback about the airflow to my protective window. Um, I kind of had the vent pointing right at it. Probably the best suggestion I heard was actually adding like an extender tube to raise that window up out of the build chamber and then fill it with air. That would be quite complicated to implement as far along as we are in the project. So I thought a simpler solution to test would be coming up with just another vent that um, blew air horizontally across the front of that window and not at it. I just wrapped up the rest of the wiring. During that process, I discovered that one of these end stop switches aren't working, so it'll be like another week and a half, two weeks before that arrives. So next, I think I wanna go ahead and get all the body panels cut out. I have just a little bit of argon left in the tank and I need to do one weld on the body panels um, for this window opening. Um, so I'm thinking I'll have just enough to make that weld and then I can go get the tank refilled. Um, I'd like to do like a purging test and see how much argon it takes to actually purge the chamber. I have the first set of panel files all set up, so let's go ahead and start doing this. These panels are going to be cut out of 16 gauge steel. Um, I'm using oxygen as the assist gas and a 1.5 double nozzle. All right, that was the last panel. Now that we're done, it looks like all those body panels took 11 sheets of this 24 by 36 inch material. Um, I have them all stacked around in piles based on their side. It's the right side, back, left side, and that was the front over there. Now that there's been what I would call a hobby level fiber laser cutting machine starting to hit the market, um, there's a lot of people sharing their photos and videos of the things they're cutting out. Um, but nobody ever shows you the back. Um, most people are using compressed air and it typically can li leave a little bit of a burr on the back. Um, I'm using oxygen and it is so clean. I'm not really gonna do any post-processing to these. I'm just gonna wipe them down with a paper towel to clean off the grease. And we'll go ahead and install them on the machine and make sure everything fits. Um, if it does, I'll go back later and spray paint these parts. I'm gonna remove these two handles to get them out of the way. I have all the panels installed on the front and the top, except for the door panel, which is the panel that I need to do some welding on. Basically what I want to do is weld up this little frame around this opening. Uh, I thought I'd make it look a little more finished and probably add a little bit of rigidity to the door as well.
I got the front door installed. Looks pretty nice. Obviously this weld's gonna look uh, much better once I get it painted, but I just need to get some magnetic latches so that will close. I think that should work well. I've got all of the body panels attached and it looks like what you would expect, a metal box and uh, soon to be a black metal box as soon as we get it painted. Um, but yeah, that looks good for now. Let's start doing some testing. After adding the body panels, I realized it was just really dark inside here. So I added some strip lights up above here and now we can see what's going on. Last thing before we do the test purge, I need to get the oxygen sensor actually into its housing here. All right, let me get that back on the machine. We just turned on the machine and it looks like we're at about 16.73% oxygen. So let me start putting in some argon and see if we can get that down below 1%. I'm just manually opening and closing the solenoid valves. Um, this one button right here triggers both of them. Um, I, I opened it for 20 seconds and then closed it and I did it twice and it's down to what, 6. 9%, so let's run it some more. Okay, so I have my argon pressure at 20 cubic feet an hour, and I ran it for 20 second intervals, and then I would wait uh, a minute and let the sensor catch up. I did that nine times, so it took about three minutes of pumping in argon uh, to get down below 0.5%. So now I need to figure out how to set up the automated functions in the software so that I can have it keep an eye on the oxygen content and open and shut that valve as needed while we're printing. I've been playing around with the printer configurations and you can see here I have a file loaded and it's mid print right now. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how everything's working except one thing. These end stops, they're supposed to have a um, two millimeter detection range but it appears it's not actually working until it actually hits the sensor, um, which just isn't gonna work because I would like to have the, the back movement go a bit faster so we can speed up the print. But uh, so anyways, um, you could see I even tried putting a beefier rod on here thinking maybe it would detect that easier instead of my thin little piece, but it doesn't seem to make any difference. So I've ordered some new ones that are supposed to detect a four millimeter range. So I'm gonna swap that out, see if that helps. So let me give you an update on the slicing software. As I mentioned before, Triangulatica gave me their software. I've spent a good deal amount of time in it now. And the problem I'm having is I cannot get my sliced files to import into my printer correctly. Some of the layers will come in fine, but then other layers will just be missing. It's probably some setting that I have not correct or something, I'm not sure but uh, I've just been unable to get it to work. So from there, I also got the demo for Voxel Dance. I tried it out and it worked great. It imported the sliced file into my printer just fine. So that seemed like a good option until I found out about the pricing. From there, I was also recommended to try Materialize Magics, which also looks like a very powerful software. I requested a demo and they contacted me and gave me the pricing and I also had to walk away from that. So that led me to Autodesk Fusion. There's a manufacturing extension that you can purchase, which unlocks a lot of features. I was interested in it before because it allows some more features for five axis machining, 
but I never pulled the trigger on it because of the pricing. As well as that, they have all the slicing capability for like my printer. And I downloaded the 14 day trial and it worked just fine. An added benefit of using this is that I'm already using Fusion to create all my models. So it's kind of seamless right into my uh, design workflow. The price is about $1,500 a year, which I'm not crazy about, but when comparing it to everything else, this is actually the budget option. So I think what I'm going to do is probably go this route. Here's what it looks like in Fusion. If you go to the Manufacture tab, then go to Additive. It took me a while to figure it out, but I managed to set up my own custom printer. You can see here my build plate and the print volume. I got my model loaded. I'm able to slice it. There's also some features for filling the build volume and a number of different options for different support types. I'm guessing that the options in here are pretty limited compared to the other softwares, but you know, I just need something as cheap as possible and something that will work. So I guess while we're waiting to get that sensor swapped out, there's one more thing I can test and that's to see how the powder spreading works. Um, I've got some 316L stainless steel powder, 15 to 45 micron. So how about we put a little bit in there and see how it spreads. As I've been getting closer to actually start printing, I've been thinking about um, the powder handling and post-processing. Um, you can see I've bought a little sandblasting kit um, with some glass beads, some brushes uh, for cleaning up the prints. Uh, I've got a sieve and a container for recycling the powder and a scoop for putting in the powder. I've got a respirator and some gloves. And in my shop, I have a HEPA filter that I can run in here to filter the air. I'm assuming when the valves open up to purge the oxygen that there's the possibility of it releasing hexavalent chromium vapor since we're printing stainless steel. So I'll probably just run that output line right into this help of filter here. The new sensor arrived quicker than expected so I went ahead and got that installed. Um, it helps but I'm still not totally satisfied with how this movement works. Um, the software has acceleration and deceleration settings and soft limits. Um, so when it moves in this direct direction, it'll go, and then it'll slow down and stop before the sensor. But when it moves back in this direction, it never decelerates. It just goes full speed until it gets back to zero. And by the time it can slow down, it wants to bump that sensor. So I'm not really sure how to solve that at this point. It seems like just how the software works. Um, so I think we're just going to have to move on. After that first test, I think I learned a few things. Um, first, it looks like I should probably sieve the powder before I put it in here. I noticed at the beginning there were some kind of clumps. Um, I should probably compact it down a little bit to make sure there's no voids. I noticed that also. Second, um, at first I wasn't providing enough powder, um, so it wasn't actually covering the whole thing, only in, in areas. Um, once I raised that level um, up to 0.1 millimeters, it was actually quite a bit too much powder. So I need to find the sweet spot um, where it provides just enough powder to cover it, but we're not wasting a bunch of it. Um, and third, I noticed the recoder blade um, appeared to be slightly lower in the middle than on the edges. So I have five adjustment screws on there, so I need to take a look at that and see if I can make it more level. The powder actually looks pretty smooth here on the build plate once we provided it with enough powder. It looks like I found the sweet spot for the powder delivery. Um, I raised it up to 0 0.05 millimeters. Um, each pass and it looks like it's providing just enough powder to cover the build platform. Let's go ahead and try the first test print. Um, I'm just going to do this corner bracket 
Um, so it's just gonna be right in the middle of the build platform. So I think it'll be easier to wait to, to level out the recoder blade um, once I've cleaned out all this powder. So I think I can go ahead and do this test print before adjusting that since it's not really gonna affect it. Yeah, so I just need to add some more powder and uh, let's try it. Next time you see me, hopefully we'll be printing our first test piece. Um, I have to admit my anxiety level is pretty high right now. This has been quite a long and stressful project. Um, really hoping we can achieve some level of success here. As always, thank you to Skyfire for supporting this project. And thank you to all my Patreon supporters for making all this possible. Thank you guys.